Before telling about the event that we are going to talk about, we are doing in Bangalore, let me put uh, a background to what, why we are doing this activity and why we are here to tell uh, about the activity of Bangalore, that Segretech, Foodex, and a, a huge activity. Friends, uh, 30 years from, 30 years back in a small town called Amroha, well, it's uh, quite popular because of the name of uh, Kamal Amrohi and a uh, lot many other uh, intellectuals. However, it's really a small town. And uh, there were certain boys who had to leave their, leave their town, leave their education because their mango farm of about 150 biga, which is uh, close to 35, 40 acres, it was not enough to give them proper food proper square meal for 365 days a year. From that situation, they had to do a lot of compromises so that they had to stop education, they had to do all kind of works ultimately to take, take, the, take the family along and give the food to the family. Well, I belong to this family. I was one of the farmers who passed my entire life in mango orchard. Now, why we were not able to sustain? My brother did a lot of sacrifices. He, he worked for media companies. He, was, uh, he told me that he used to go on tour, uh, doing marketing for advertisement sales. And uh, the longest tour he told me was uh, 21 days, in which he did not sleep even a single night in a hotel room anywhere. He said, I used to sleep only in the bus. Because the family, he had to support the family and, of course, education. The thing is, when we got to that level that of course we are comfortable then what we, we thought that let's uh, let's see why this farming with a hundred fifty biga of land is still not sustainable it is not able to sustain a family a, a family who wants to get educated so we started I did my electronic engineering I did I was in Casio I was a part of uh, uh, Bharti mobile and lot when we sat together, we found that there is a huge lacuna, whereas the knowledge which is required to convert agriculture into a profitable venture, more money is spent on creating that knowledge, but the knowledge remains confined to certain nicely arranged bookshelves of certain ministries and certain government departments. How to manufacture a greenhouse? The research was done in early 80s. By 90s, it was perfected for all climatic conditions of India, but the information never reached the farmers, the true beneficiaries. How to control the mealybugs, which was our villain, the villain that we faced, mealybugs and all uh, spider mites, we were never told that there were so easy, easy methods available to control them. And that's why we used to get so many losses in mango farming. We were never told that there are many schemes available from government of India which if the farmers adopt, they are going to convert their agriculture into profitable business. We thought in 1995 when I was working with KCO that my brother said, why not start that, that gap that we have faced, let us fill that gap and make that our as a business. And we started with that. We started writing, we started doing seminars and exhibitions we started very first India's very first conference on commercial floriculture. That interested me because I, as an electronic engineer, my desire was always to go for DRDO, but then situ situations were not right. And of course, uh, uh, when uh, got selected in NTPC and uh, Power Grid Corporation, my uncles uh, told me that you cannot survive because uh, you have to compromise on corruption. And somehow, uh, being born in a farmer's family, uh, I don't know how many of you, uh, if you have been in their family, for us, the ego is a very strong thing. The very fact that we are getting corrupted is so insulting to ourselves. Less, uh, if anybody else says, we don't mind. But we know if we are corrupted, then it is so insulting to within ourselves that we cannot sleep. So I, I got an appointment letter from NTPC and I was told that you have to compromise. And I said, no, I am not going to do in that case. So what we realized was that if the farmers are told the knowledge, 
the knowledge that they require in that case all the problems to major level can be controlled of course there are political things there are certain sociological issues there are political issues for example our government has signed gat now is the time for saying good or bad about gat or wto is gone we have signed it and it's 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 a fact but the fact is our farmers have to produce out of say 100 acre or 500 acre whatever is the ma maximum land ceiling limit in different states our farmers have to produce within that square limited square and they are supposed to be competitive with a farmer who has a 16 mile long farm so for the for that farmer one person is like doing the computer printing if you have seen the color uh, the inkjet printer it goes like this on paper and every time it it gets gets printed whatever you are printing it gets printed on the paper so the farms in australia and america are moving in that way where the tractors are left in the field and one person will give a command that like, i want this area to be sowed and all the tractors with under gps control automatically fully robotic they will start working in a in a field which is 2 or 3 or 4 mile long now they are able to produce because of the mass level production they are able to produce food at a very cheap price our farmers are bound by high inflation cost uh, high interest rates of the banks whereas the same is available in us or other farmers at 1% or close to 0% with a huge subsidy our farmers actually are paying a lot of taxes indirectly so what happened is that there are certain intrinsic issues which i hope the new government as they have been promising they will take care however the issue is that we wanted the farmers to see the latest technologies so that they may become more competitive we started with floriculture as i told because uh, floriculture what i found was floriculture is virtually like a, uh, an automatic control system uh, something that i loved in which a greenhouse is made if i want to grow roses i know that the temperature should be between 17 degree and 25 degree 27 degree precise to be precise 70 to 17 to 27 degree so i have to make a temperature control i have to put up a humidity controller system i have to control the water watering system all using one single computer once everything is set we just plant the rose roses within that greenhouse and then whole system it starts working and you get the roses which is equivalent to those grown in any other place because rose flower or the plant will never know whether i am really growing in bangalore or whether i am growing in rajasthan so long as it gets 17 to 27 degree celsius temperature and it gets the humidity and certain uh, soil inputs whatever is required so the rose is not that intelligent to understand whether i am located in rajasthan or bangalore that is the concept we wanted to give to the farmers we started with floriculture today one activity floriculture conference and uh, i did a plagiarism what you call it's uh, not good but uh, i was honored by uh, to receive an uh, notice from ministry of agriculture from the commissioner of horticulture and uh, it was that uh, mr nakvi you have been publishing things in different magazines you are writing articles without taking any permission from the ministry about the knowledge that you are taking from ministry's books i preserved that and uh, later on when the commissioner become very senior he nominated me to as a member of the directorate of floriculture he said it was his job to send the notice but then he said good keep doing it so that's how we did we started taking knowledge out of the places where it was it it had been kept and he started distributing it to the farmers well starting with floriculture uh, we got a lot of farmers in uh, uh, the first show which we did in bangalore Uh, we had to call the police virtually on the second day because there were too many people and the exhibition center was completely jam packed we had to call the police that please ask people to not to come inside it's already crowded we had to go out uh, for a bigger place and we started a cluster cluster approach to exhibition now this is very first time that uh, our group started it's an approach is that if a farmer walks in whether he owns a land of only 500 square meter or whether he owns 50000 acres i don't know all kind of people are there whether it's a company for a farmer with only 500 square meter 
if he puts in more labor maybe he can start a small poultry farm because ultimately it's sunshine plus water has to be converted into human food whether protein whether carbohydrate or whatever so i have taken we have taken a kind of more scientific approach to this agriculture into agri business depending on the size of the land a farmer should be given an option that okay you can start poultry farm if he is not interested in the meat activity due to certain reason okay he can go in for aloe vera cultivation now i was told i we used to burn a kind of weed in our mango orchard we used to burn always burn that weed uh, it was told that it is okay it is uh, uh, tulsi tulsi plant so it was uh, growing like anything and we found it difficult to move around picking mangoes so the only option was to burn it before the season starts after learning in this sector i found that uh, tulsi seed is sold in a few thousand rupees per gram and now i knew oh we have been burning this gold since childhood we never we were never told that it is such a such a precious commodity it was growing like wild in, in our farms so there are lot of things which are required but the knowledge never reaches the farmer unfortunately okay we will end up uh, saying a thing against government but i don't want to go in that direction but unfortunately the knowledge is not is still not reaching the farmers therefore what we thought was that the farmers should be given a platform where they should be exposed to multiple options and this agri business show that we uh, have added this year we have added meat as well uh, because uh, we thought that the fish is going to be a very important uh, component of uh, protein security of the nation here the farmer will walk in if he is living near a uh, near a talab i will have lost one of my orchard to talab because the pond gave so much entire mango tree got burned if i am live if, if i have a piece of land close to the pond maybe i can go for inland fishing fish farming we can start goat farming we can do processing of the fruits uh, we used to get hail storms in up and uh, uh, almost every it's a routine that 30 to 35% of the crop mango crop or even other crops as well i'm talking mango because it has been a part of uh, my childhood it is wasted due to uh, hail storms the small pieces will fall off we were not told that it is so easy to create a pickle you just have to use salt water nothing else for us making pickle was a kind of big industry but then when i started learning and i found it so easy if you cannot do anything just use plain salt water and put everything into it it will be, it will turn into a pickle and later on if you can have you can invest you put oil and other spices and make a more profitable product out of it the thing is farmers have been losing money on almost all fronts then there are cases of suicides there are cases of all kind of problems that farmers face the reason what we found is they are not aware of what can be done with their field and what can be done with the product which is growing sometimes farmer try to grow things which will not naturally grow in their field my land is suitable for for example mango farming but i find oh apple is selling for 120 rupees per kg mango is just 20 rupees so why not grow apple in uttar pradesh there is nobody to tell me that is foolish to think this has happened with many farmers who tried to grow roses in gurgaon it happened with a few farmers who tried to grow roses in jaipur floriculture farms come, came up and they failed because they were able to get nice roses except that the production cost was at least 12 rupees per single rose so they could not compete with bangalore or hyderabad roses which were just 55 paisa production cost so anyway the idea of this india's largest agribusiness show is to ensure that a farmer walks in and walks out with a business plan in his hand he knows what he is going to grow if he is going to grow fine if he doesn't want to grow he can set up local units as well for example in india food ex especially we are going to show a simple potato making machine up to 400 kg potato can be converted into chips so when we know that the farmers are throwing away their potato due to lower prices 
why not they just convert it into chips? At least they don't have to throw it away. It will definitely have a value more than the potato. Similarly, tomato has been an issue. Just last year, thousands of tons of tomato was thrown away on the roads because the prices were so low that the picking cost was not justifying. Even the, uh, the, the price in the market was not justifying. They couldn't pay the laborer. Finally, it was either left to rot in the farms or thrown away as a mark of protest on the roads. And this year, all those farmers, they stopped growing tomato. And this year, we see it has become a real political issue. It's become so costly. For the simple reason that we do not have technology is not given to the farmers, whereas, for example, as a part of this, uh, uh, this exercise, there's a few companies we have invited who will be showing a cold chain, a small cold room, which runs only on solar power. Now, what will happen is, in case there is a glut in the market, farmer can at least save his crop for two days, three days. So, the, the shock of the market price up and down can be minimized and there can be more stable price in the market. These technologies have to go to the farmers. Similarly, not everybody has to start growing. New enterprises can come up within the villages who will start preserving. Somebody can start manufacturing pulp, tomato pulp. It's so easy. It is, it is not, it's not a rocket science. They are all very easy technologies. And they have been developed by our own scientists in various institutions. The only thing is that farmers do not know it. 